Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, A8744. So, guys, it's been roughly around 24 hours since USA lost to Panama. And I'm still reeling. I'm still feeling depressed. I'm still... I'm this numb feeling. I could shout. I could scream. I could yell. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how I react. The result will stay as a result. USA lost to Panama at home. I'm going to go on record and say this right now. This is the most embarrassing loss USA has had in recent history since Trinidad Tobago. There, I would even, you could even make an argument this is worse than Trinidad. Now, I think this is not as bad as Trinidad because Trinidad, at least, well, you know, this Panama is a way better team than Trinidad. But you could argue it could be worse because this is a significant game. But then again, you know, getting knocked out of the World Cup is another thing. But anyways, we'll, we'll, you can have the debate in the comments. We can go all that. But let's just talk about the game itself. Congratulations to Panama. To all my Panamanian viewers, they deserve this win. Thomas Christensen is a very good coach. I will go as far as to say that he is the best coach in CONCACAF. The only other coach that you can maybe say is better is maybe Jesse Marsh. That's it. But Jesse Marsh has only got here for Canada a few games. He is by far the best. You look at what he's done with this very mediocre team. Because, guys, let's be real. Panama's squad is very mediocre. It's very average. There's not a lot of world-class players on this team. The fact that he's got this team to do so well, punch above its weight, is incredible. And you see now in football, it's more about how well you play as a team than about your individuals. It's all great and all having the individual players, having the big-name players like USA. Look look at the talented players we have. We have the likes of Milan players in the level. We have the likes of Juventus. We have the likes of, you know, um, Nani and Forrest. Um, we have the, like, you know, uh, Bundesliga. Like, there's so many top five leagues players in this team. But the issue is, it doesn't matter how good your players are. The players have to execute. And you have to give cool credit to Panama. Because had they had not won this game, this would have been such a missed opportunity. Because they were up a man for the majority of the game. Let's talk about the game itself. So the game started off with a great early goal there from Weston McKinney. Off a, off a rebound there. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, USA's got this. Unfortunately, though, the goal was disallowed because Tim Ream was offside. Then... Weya makes a cynical foul. It's a stupid red. It's a straight red. Straight red. Straight red. Then USA score a goal. Great, great goal there. Great interception there from Scali. And I think he passes it to Robertson. And Robertson passes it to Balugan. And Balugan scores a worldie. He scores a fantastic worldie, guys. I feel so bad for Balugan. Because he, he was probably the best USA player on the day. He got a standing ovation, guys. He got a standing ovation. I mean, that just showed how good of a performance he was. And guys, I'll have to give credit. Balugan's been showing up. Because before the Copa America, I had my doubts in him. I wasn't too sure if I was too sold on him. The guy has been balding. The guy has been amazing for the United States. So you have to give him full credit. He's been sensational. Then Panama go on the other end and equalize their great, great solo effort there from Blackman. Maybe you could have said Matt Turner would do better, but Matt Turner did get injured throughout later in the game and he had to come off. So maybe we'll cut that, give some pass to Matt Turner. Uh, then USA, man, we had some glorious chances to uh, to w just get a goal there in the first half. You know, Pulisic could have potentially won us a penalty there in the first half. Panama had some good chances if they were if they had more bo bodies in the box. And the first half ended one one. I'm thinking to myself, okay, we really we 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 have to win this game because if we don't win this game, we put a lot of pressure on that Uruguay game. But at the same time, I knew to myself, are we really going to win this game? I wasn't so sure because Panama was creating a lot of good opportunities. Barsanas had a good offer, uh, um, opportunity there. Blackman had a good oppor a good block there for Arena. But you could just tell Panama were really trying to get the goal. But they were just not being clinical with their chances. That's the thing. But then the second half rolled on. And this is where I think the United States messed up. We should have because we should have parked the bus after taking the lead. We have to go defensive. Because when you go down a man, you have to be defensive. United States made a triple change at halftime, and you could tell that the triple change actually didn't help. USA actually looked a lot worse because every time we try to go forward, we weren't able to hit the target at all. We only created one shot on target in the second half with the amount of three shots. Balogun had a great effort there at the 70th minute. Then Pepe had an effort there at the 81st. And then Chris Richards had an effort there at the last minute to level the score after Panama makes a stupid foul there. Carlos gets a red card. Then... Panama go on the other end, and they kept quaking chance after chance after chance, and you were, you were going to tell that they were going to eventually score because USA were scrambling so hard. They were trying to defend for their lives, and USA eventually succumbed to the pressure. And, guys, Panama could have even had a penalty. 
They had a penalty shot in the 61st minute. When Cameron Carter Vickers fouled the guy. Guys, Cameron Carter Vickers was awful. I don't want to see Cameron Carter Vickers for the next game. So for United States, man, what does this mean for us? United States is now in a bad position where we have to basically better Panama's result. Panama's playing against Bolivia. We're playing against Uruguay. We have to basically better what Panama does. Because currently, as the group standings right now shows you guys, Panama is on a three points with a, plus, a minus one goal difference. United States, a plus one goal difference. So it could come down to goal differential battle, you know, potentially. So for Uruguay, as I said, man, they pretty much math. They have a mathematically secured, but they are pretty much going to top this group most likely. With the superior goal difference is plus seven. With the points of accumulated six, Uruguay should top this group. But now the question is, will Uruguay rest players the final match day? That remains to be seen because if Uruguay rest the players the final match day, United States can maybe beat them. But if USA, if Uruguay plays their best team, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for United States to beat them. It's going to be very hard. And so for United States, man, my oh, my critiques is that we got to see more of Reina. Reina has been so underutilized in the Copa America. I thought um, I thought Cameron Carter Vickers was poor. Messi McKinney was also poor as well. Now, Pulisic, I'll, I, I won't fault Pulisic. He tried the best he could. He tried everything he could. It just wasn't working. Um, Tim Reed, Kramer, or Chris Richards, I thought they were all right for the most part. Robertson, I thought, had a great game. Scali, I thought, was great. And yeah, for the United States, man, the Ethan Horvath, eh. He was okay, I guess. Cameron Corder Vickers was poor. Johnny Cardoso was eh. Ricardo Pepe was eh. Sargent was eh. And for, the United, and for Panama, man, as I said, man, massive win for them. And if they beat Bolivia, they're practically in the quarterfinals. They, they, they'll probably most likely be in the quarterfinals. Now, it's about Uruguay 5, Bolivia nil. Let me just quickly touch up on this game. Uruguay absolutely destroyed Bolivia. Uruguay, fantastic win for them. Amazing. You could probably make an argument that they're one of the most informed teams in South America. There, I would say, you could even make an argument that they're more informed than Argentina. Because Uruguay's midfield is amazing. Guate, Valverde, De La Cruz. They got Ben Sacor. You got Derescata. Uh, then Uruguay's attack. But my only concern for Uruguay is that striker, is Nunes. Is Nunes going to be clinical for them in the latter stages? That remains to be seen. Because defensively, they look good. Goalkeeper-wise, great. It's just a striker. Is Nunes going to be very clinical? So congrats to Uruguay. A huge win for them. And for Bolivia, man, as I said, please, Bolivia, do me a favor. I will I will respect Bolivians if they manage to do this, guys. So like I said, guys, stay tuned for our Match Day 3 predictions video dropping tomorrow. And yeah, guys, hope you guys did enjoy. So please remember to like and subscribe. And um, oh yeah, one last thing I want to say, guys, before we move, head out. The, the referee for the USA Panama game was very, very controversial. And let me put it this way, because there was a lot of fouls committed in the game that yellow cards weren't given, VAR didn't check. I'm just saying, man, the referee wasn't the best. But we can't use the referee as an excuse for to blame the loss. Everyone deserves to be blamed for the loss for the USA. Anyways, hope you guys did enjoy. Please want to like and subscribe and peace out.